Hello friends, hope you're well. I recently had the pleasure of speaking with Daniel Lindholm, a prolific freelance composer within the gaming industry who's worked on games like Street Fighter V and Resident Evil 6. Recently, he was embroiled in a controversy regarding statements about Fei Long being dropped from future Street Fighter games, with the Lee estate also getting involved. I caught up with him to catch his side of the story. So, okay, this is a beautiful day, it's a beautiful morning, and my wife, she has decided that she's gonna go and meet her friend mm -hmm. and sit down and talk for hours and hours and hours. And I was like sitting there, you know, ah, I wish I had some friends to talk to. Like, hey, maybe this is the time for me to actually have the opportunity to answer people's questions directly on a, on a YouTube stream. So like, no, that cannot be that bad. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll, I'll be jumping out on, a, on my own stream, my own channel in this amount of minutes, I think like 10 or 20 minutes, and I'll be waiting for you. So okay. I start up the stream. I said, yes, there's going to be a little bit of dead time here, but I'm sure someone's going to pop up and, and we might be able to have a little bit of talk, not only about music, but maybe mm -hmm. like hypothetical questions as well. And oh boy, was there a lot of hypothetical questions in there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but... Most of the people that were in the room, I think were like eight, eight of us in there. And it's like we all kind of know each other. Mm. Uh, so it was like more like hanging out with friends. So it was a small, small stream, like a local stream with people who you who you knew regularly and kind of yeah, trusted. That, and yeah. yeah, that came in and and always said, hey, nice to see you. Or people who just found my music and hey, I really like your music, blah, mm. blah, blah. And so there were a lot of good questions there. And then there was this one hypothetical question because this is something we need to be very careful about. But a hypothetical in your view, what does mm. that mean to you, hypothetical? Um, hypothetical, um, it's not a certainty. It's, 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 a, it's an imagined uh, scenario. Like if this were to be true, mm. which it's not. Right. <laughs> Which is not, and, yeah. uh, and that's why I'm so happy now that the Lee family has decided, yeah, this article is shit. There is not a single word of truth in what this guy is saying. Mm -hmm. And Captain has said, we, we deny any kind of uh, so, so, what, speculations what was, and stuff like that. What was but, brought up in the stream? I mean, what, 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 what did, did someone ask you about um, Fei Long specifically or? No, no, mm -hmm. it was just uh, the question was, uh, I actually asked by uh, asked by man's man. He goes under that nickname, mm. and he said, "Imagine what if if you got to write music for an already existing Street Fighter character, mm. if they didn't exist previously? Let's like basically." And I asked him, "Do you mean like writing music for this character from scratch, as I imagined him to be for the first time? Mm -hmm. Something along those lines." Mm. I was like, you know, that's a really good question. Let me think mm. about it for a while. Let me, like, and already there, the, the, the question is, what if, mm. stage to me, this is a hypothetical thought experiment, right? Mm. So I was like, oh, well, oh, yeah, well, they have, that guy got a good theme, but a, a character I really like, Fei Long, mm. hands down. This is the character I really would like to write for, but I don't think I will ever have the chance to do so. Right. So, as far as I know, uh, we won't see this character uh, ever again, or something along those lines. But now, yeah. and this was just on a on a small little local stream on, on your YouTube channel. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and I guess uh, what happened is, was it Event Hubs or was it Nintendo Life who picked on on it first? I have no idea. I just one looked up on a, one of them or something or someone. All I real saw was someone that was tuning in and they they yeah. clipped. Um, well, what, what the quote is yes. is a, a character that I know we won't see at all. There's been a lot of discussion about it. I mentioned earlier a character I'd like to rewrite the music for would be Fei Long. Um, I do have other sources, not only Capcom but friends of mine in the U.S. who are very close fa uh, friends with the Lee family, and they have basically said that any kind of resemblance to Mr. Bruce Lee is now omitted for comedic effect, comic stuff, it needs to be honorable. That's why we won't see Fei Long again, ever. Um, mm. And they clipped that and they kind of made it into like a fact. A fact, yes, exactly. Yeah. And But uh, as I said, I was like, wait a minute. I, I go to my YouTube channel, I was like, what, 1,500 hits? For what? I was like, yeah. and oh, then yeah. 
I uh-huh. was on on Facebook and I saw the big headline. Did anyone Where, contact the... you before they they turned this into a news no, story? No, they didn't. Right, of course they, they didn't. didn't. Of course they yeah. didn't. It's for verification or. Yeah. No, they contacted Capcom and <laughs> the Leaf family. <laughs> but even more Typical. absurd, it's it's even more absurd because, like, when I found out, like, shit, what's what's this video? You know. I want to take it down. So I took down my video. So, okay, that's it. No one's about, of course, everything is already out there. It's already been cut and quote mined. Yeah. Like what I'm saying is a fact, but that's not yeah. really true. Yeah. I mean, and then the question, why would I say this? Uh, because look from a technical standpoint and, and also at the time, I always I, felt like. I, I the, think it's uh, genuinely messed up though that the whoever yeah. put out this article first didn't reach out to you first for further elaboration or confirmation or anything like that. They saw something that they could capitalize on and get some hits on and they just went with it. And this seemed to be like, you know, a pretty chilled local stream. This is the context of it. Now that I'm seeing that, it's like it it it, it becomes it becomes even more kind of ridiculous to me. Exactly, you know? And the the phrase as far as I know, mm. this is just very contaminated with that little information that I have. But that information can also be wrong. But yeah. here we are hypothesizing about a possibility of something that may or may not be a possibility. And, you know, yeah. nobody knows about the future. Who knows? Never yeah. say never. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was just really ridiculous. But yeah. A few, uh, like so the first night the first day of all this i was like oh, i feel terrible this is yeah like but for them to contact capcom have mm. my name in the article uh and then reach out to the leaf family and without even, without going through you yeah. first because it was just a little sound bite it's, it was just the tiny sound bite this was just my two cents of what i think why because of this third independent source well has a lot of his own theories why we won't see him. And I thought his theory was very compelling. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about that. So you mentioned in the stream that you um, you had friends in the US who are close with the Lee family and you have sources. So uh, like a bit of elaboration, like... Um, uh, well, I don't want to go in too deep on it, but mm. this person, as I say, he's been in all kind of entertain- fields of entertainment. Right. And so he knows one or two things. But the, the funniest thing I ever read, though, was that mm. I have spoken directly to the Lee family or some stuff. Like, no, it's yeah. not true. Like, yeah. how did you come up with that theory? Because so this was secondhand information that you received from a friend who was close to them. Uh, not well, kind of close, <laughs> but more of like, I mean, imagine like we say that like a three uh, what we call it, three degrees of separation, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Maybe like the second two people away from you, there's a famous person at the very end. Right. And there's this one person in the middle who kind of knows them, but that doesn't mean I'm speaking to them. Mm. So this is the most absurd thing I've ever heard because they don't know me. I've never spoken to them. We never met face to face. The claim that I would have spoken directly to the family are, thank God for the Lee family for saying that this... The, entire article is shit sure i got some bad mouthing mm. from them mm-hmm. but they have the right to be angry they have they, cl- they cleared right it up to be angry. they cleared yeah. it up yeah i mean that kind of proves the point I even thought i took my video down but there's someone out there who can verify and say no we don't know this guy we we don't know his face you know mm. uh this this is all false everything mm. he said is false and i say yes it's mm. all false because it's a hypothetical answer to a hypothetical question. Right. The guy didn't reach out to me and got me to clarify. What do you mean by right. that? That's just clickbait, <laughs> effectively. Yes, exactly. like they're they're not clickbait. doing proper journalism by um, you know, chasing up their sources, chasing up their material. I mean, it, it, it came from your mouth. So if they wanted to yeah. publish this, it's just um, the it's quote ethical to go through you first before they publish anything on the on their news site. It's ridiculous. But yeah, it is my worst. These are the worst I've spoken, but out of context, you know, hmm. if the question was, will we see Fei Long again? Boom. If I would hmm. say that without hesitation, hmm. but look at my statement. Do I sound absolutely sure? No, hmm. I'm, I'm kind of like looking away from the camera, trying 
carefully mm. plot out my next word, you know, what a possible thing might, might be, you know. And I'm absolutely, that should always be a giveaway. No, that is not a fact. It's just speculating. And yes, I was speculating. Mm. So it's frustrating. And as Context you said, is so important in these matters, you know, like context of you know your, your body language the way you expressed mm. yourself it, it being a private stream with you speaking mm. with you know people who you are known to and friends i mean the fact that this blew up into this huge massive um news story it's mm. um yeah it's messed yeah. up yeah and then i was like my first initial reaction was like oh shit this is gonna get me blacklisted isn't it mm. now because I heard stories about people, but this is the thing. Um, I know we're going to talk about it soon, later, but that was my main reaction. Like, whoever's mm. publishing this, boom, he has no idea what the consequences of his right. word, if it's not been verified, that they can actually mess up another person's life really badly. Yeah, your career. H have you gotten any sense from Capcom or within the gaming industry that you, that you might be blacklisted? Uh, uh, okay, that's good. We get into that question now. Basically, when I saw this article being published and 1,500 hits on the video, I took it down. Mm -hmm. But I also felt very uncomfortable. So I decided I'm going to write an apology letter to to Capcom, um, mm -hmm. and which I did. So I wrote to the music supervisor. But of course, uh, no one is writing back because who mm -hmm. knows? It's Maybe they don't have time. It's like... Yeah. Everybody's busy, no? Sure, sure And this sure. might as well be a shit in space. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, that was super massive, boom, big explosion of FGC, as I heard it. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of the world, this is nothing. nothing. Yeah. And it still would be nothing because of that quote. It's like, uh, well, as far as I know, that even makes it even worse to blow that portion up. And that person that I know, no, I don't have direct ties with the Lee family, which is also absurd, mm -hmm. but that he knows a thing or two about how everything has been gone. And there was only one guy who wrote about it, who actually got what I was trying to say. And this was a guy in Australia. I think he wrote for Otaku. Uh, Kotaku? Kotaku. Uh, yeah. Kotaku in Australia. And he actually got my point. He actually mm -hmm. got my point and uh, kind of, I'm scared of people like... Uh, we're trying to use Bruce Lee, and and imagine if my if my father dies, and people want to profit out of him yeah. and making plush toys out of him, I yeah. wouldn't feel very happy about it. That yeah. would be exploitation of of sure. something. And I, mean, I always like the Lee family because the very simple reason why I write music the way I do is because I use Lee's philosophy every day because it can apply to so many different skills and be like water means always mm. adapt. Like, that's why I don't write one genre of music. I write many pieces of different genres of music. If people want me to change a piece of tune, I don't get angry about it. I'll change the piece of the song and, and everybody gets happy. Yeah. The thing is, is, is that with, um, with Bruce Lee, for a lot of people, millions, possibly billions, he's a, he's a hero, he's an icon, myself mm. included. I, I look to him for guidance and I, I try to adhere to his philosophies and way of life as, as much yeah. as possible. Ever since I was a child, you know, I, I've really looked up to Bruce Lee. He's one of my heroes and he's a national hero in Hong Kong. So I can totally understand um, when Sh Shannon Lee is, is upset about some depictions about Bruce Lee because, I mean, not only is he a hero, but he, he was a real guy with a family yeah, and, exactly. you know, and a legacy. So like, you know, this is going back to the once upon a time in, in Hollywood, that, that whole right. kind of yeah. um, controversy. Uh, when it came out, like a lot of people were upset about how Bruce Lee was portrayed because uh, it was done in a very sort of mocking way. Yeah, I mean, if you and me, we know, I mean, we read Bruce Lee's books and the, the way I love his philosophy quotes, like to show off is a fool's way of thinking he knows glory or something, something along those lines, right? Yeah. And this is what this this guy, the, 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 the journalist, is doing right and show off is a fool's way of showing glory yeah right. uh but but the guy in australia who actually kind of knew which side way i was thinking about was about the once upon a time lifetime yeah once upon a time and i boycotted that movie mm. i actually that's the thing about 
artistic freedom. And again, now Quentin Tarantino works almost all of his movies out of a hypothetical yeah. uh, work work uh, area. You know, Tarantino has tried to defend himself in that look. This is a fictional work, and this is a you know the the name of the character he's up against. I believe it's Cliff. You know, um, Brad Pitt portraying Cliff. Um, he's a fictional character in a fictionalized Hollywood. So it's it's like asking me who would win between Bruce Lee and Dracula. But the thing is, is that Bruce Lee is a was. You know, he's a real person, right? Yeah. With a real legacy. Yeah. So it's it's really blurring the lines here. Yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, th- that's what I mean. Uh, and this is now, I'm in this predicament and I'm sitting there doing a h- hypothetical answer to a hypothetical question. How yeah. can Quentin T- Tarantino get away with? But yeah, he suffered a lot of backlash mm. and I didn't watch the movie because I never imagined Bruce Lee to be a bully. Mm. Ever, and he's definitely never. portrayed that way. He's portrayed in a very negative way, like yeah. a arrogant, condescending. He's exactly all those quality he says in his books that he's not. You know, mm. it's, it's a total negative view, skewed view of Bruce Lee, and I, I didn't like it very much. So I said, no, I'm not going to watch this, Quentin. And the same thing, people are getting the chance to learn about like okay say you're studying for a big test about world war ii people say oh let's let's watch a world war ii movie and they up watching inglorious bastards and take that as a historical document <laughs> then we're having a problem i'm scared I, that people learning an alternative version of world war ii and forget <laughs> about the real world. i i think with inglorious bastards it's it's a lot more tongue-in-cheek i mean it, it's it's much more clearly like it's done with a real sense of humor but mm-hmm. and also it doesn't draw from yeah like it, you know there there is a sort of a cameo from like Churchill um, but he's played very much by the book like Hitler is made fun of but he's Hitler right you you can make right. fun of Hitler it's okay to make fun of Hitler yeah, it's, right? it's okay to make fun out of Hitler but then try to depict like okay so if the question to test was how did Hitler die oh Brad Brad Pitt shot him in the face you know like. <laughs> uh, Okay, now I'm worried about our kids that way, you know. <laughs> but yes, I agree. It was a funny movie, but I would say he's still playing around in the hypothetical s- spheres. Sure. And here I am doing a hypothetical for maybe about 20 seconds, and boom, everything changes. But, but I don't know how bad it changes. But again, I'm really glad the Lee family said this is bullshit. Everything that's written, everything those of quotes are wrong. Mm. They cleared it up. Like, Oh yeah. man, thank you. And Capcom saying we're not uh, adhering, we don't comment on speculations or rumors. I was yeah. like, okay. But still, now my name is out there. And yes, the rep- I was. this was not an interview. This was me hanging around with some of my friends on, right. on YouTube. And we were just having a cozy moment. And even the guy who asked me the question said, my question was cut out from the article. They didn't even post my question in they, the article. They removed as much context as possible. Yeah, the yeah. fact that it was a close, intimate str- uh, with stream with a few people who were close to you, and mm. the question was cut out. And like, for my impression, I thought this was an interview that they conducted with you, and and you responded no. like that. But yeah, all of that was was cut out. Yeah, which, it was um, bullshit. Con- all of it. Yeah. Context is important. Context is, is what gives meaning, meaning to every sort of interaction, to everything we say. It, it sucks that that you've been through this. Yeah, um, but at least, I mean, look at me. I don't feel angry or or so. All I just want to do is like, I want to know who wrote the article. I would really like to talk to this person. Have you because have you not uh, been been in contact with anyone? No, who, yeah. I haven't been contacted by this individual. But yeah. even there, I mean, I know we're we're all not perfect. I mean, that's the thing. The best lesson in the world, even Bruce Lee said this, is make mistakes because we can actually learn from them. Yeah. And I think if this person just would man up, take his or her responsibility, have the chance to reach out to me because I'm not unreachable. I'm not an <laughs> idol. I'm not a superstar. I DM'd uh, you and here we are having having an interview the next day. Super easy, right? Right. That's what a That's journalist it. is supposed to do before they oh. drudge up a story about it. But it's the then, first step. Verify your sources. Verify what you've heard. Uh, you know, run things up. Um, get further information on it. It's it's the first step in any so, sort of 
journalism, uh, journalism with integrity at least. And it's very, very clear that they they found a story, they found a little soundbite or a quote that they could create a bit of drama about, run a story with, get some hits. They didn't verify their sources and they just ran with it. And your career has potentially been damaged as a result. I mean, what do you think might happen out of this? Okay, there are a few things that I might think could happen to me. But mm. then we also look at the, okay, where am I time-wise with, for example, Capcom? Uh, am I working with them right now? No, this is all, all on my own time. This is my free time. Mm. Uh, do I have a party with Capcom right now? No, I'm, I'm still on my free time. I should have uh, the right to just chill with my friends. Mm. Uh, but I do hear when people are working on projects, and I know this myself, that you should over no circumstances talk about it. I don't even talk to my parents when I'm on a project, what it is mm. that I'm doing, right? Mm. I'm that tight mm. every time I do a project. I, I sign the NDA, that's it. Every word I say is mine. This is mm. my responsibility. And and if I make a hypothetical, or, well, speculating, uh, that's what hypothetical means, that you enter a, a realm of the unknown, the like almost making guesses rather than establishing facts about what you think, where things will go in the future. You know, mm. I think your back should be pretty much free from that. But if I have to say, and now I'm just speculating every five seconds, it's, it would just be a ridiculous thing. I'd have to put a disclaimer on my own video. It just says here, I'm hanging out with my friends. We're just chatting. That's it. So if you have a question, it, sure. It's, it's an unfortunate um, side effect of the social media age where um, we're more connected than ever, but communication conversely is at an all-time low you know the yeah. um and misinformation is at an all-time high it's so easy to take a soundbite cherry pick what you want to take um mm -hmm. and then twist a narrative around it to suit your own ends it sucks i mean i you know i've, I've been through something similar myself it's never it, pleasant yeah. um and it feels like um, Especially how, when it how, how affects it other this? people outside, you know, that yeah. was not people who were not in my conversation. Like, oh, well, uh, like, how do they make this shit up? Like, who? When did I ever say I spoke to the Lee family? I like, I cannot get my head around it because that's not true. And funny thing was like, there was a there's this um, Capcom uh, or FGC fighter guy who lives in Japan. He's American. I think. It, Jiuna, American G Jin fighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Jiuna. I heard from the like the chef at uh, the Capcom <laughs> right. that T Hawk has been has been uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> like, that's, that's basically okay. it. It's like you should you know you should verify your sources. You should run things up. It's like don't right. take everything at face at value. Face value. So I mean, when he did that, I was like, okay, I got you on my team. Thank you so much. No, because yeah. it's it's super ridiculous. Yeah. And I, I reached out to him and said thank you for understanding uh, what I'm going through. So yeah, you just made a meme out of this thing and I'm actually laughing at it. So thank you so much. But he yeah. hasn't replied to me back. I guess he's a busy guy too. Yeah, he's busy. He's busy. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I mean, is there anything else you want to you want to clear up on the on the Fei Long aspect? I mean, um Oh yeah, you know, we were talking about blacklisting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I think could happen uh, as I said, when I send an NDA, boom boom boom, and if I talk about it, yes, that's that basically is right there you violated our contract uh now we're not gonna we don't want to work with you but, again but no that has not happened yeah i mean did you violate yeah. any ndas though you were just sort of talking no. and speculating on no. on your um on your stream yeah. and yeah it caused a bit of a hafuffle but hopefully yeah. that can be contained and hopefully yeah. you know i, I mean you know, yeah. i know you've been talking to other podcasts i mean hopefully we can just get the message out there that this was yeah. the result of some predatory journalism i mean when i said on facebook that oh shit i'm getting blacklisted that was just like my initial reaction because i'm so familiar with other people who have ended up that way oh yeah but um, they were just breaking nda but for me i had no jobs no contracts nothing so i i should be free that's it this is you know blacklisting even if it's not done in a formal way like you know mm. you're put on a name and you're blacklisted it can be done informally like ah uh, this guy's a bit of a troublemaker uh there's there's a bit of a there's some drama surrounding him ah uh, you know there's there's a strange vibe uh, you know we don't want to 
we don't want to work with them right now for so and so reasons. It it can be that informal. Right. It can be yeah. it can just be a conversation around a coffee right. table. So um, nobody knows really if I'm blacklisted or not. But right, like and, like people think that companies are like these monolithic entities, right?、Mm-hmm. But in reality, they're just a, a web of interpersonal relationships.、Mm-hmm. And whether you get hired or not, very often boils down to a few guys sitting down and having, like you mentioned, you got hired、oh, um, over a meal for Resident Evil Six, right? They, you gave your、I'll、phone or your, your PSP、yeah. with, with Casino Royale、uh, music on it, and And they liked it, and that's often how business decisions are made: interpersonal、uh, connections and conversations. So, yeah, maybe you're not formally blacklisted, but this is definitely something to worry about. I understand. Yeah, so that that is my big worry. But as I all know, like for for what I care, even though I wrote an apology letter, which is a very good step to do,、mm. uh, because like I had no idea what was going on, and I was just so surprised that it just popped up. And I said, if someone has contacted you, I'm so sorry. This is all on me. This is my inconvenience. But everything I was saying, I was answering a hypothetical answer、mm. to a hypothetical question.、Mm. I hope you can have some kind of understanding for for the stupid reporting. Well, I did not say stupid or any bad words <laughs> in the email. It is stupid. But, it is stupid. But yes, it, it is、yeah. really stupid when you don't like can confirm or like what did you mean by that? Like these、it's, reporters taking those steps. It's it's、um, just frustrating. I mean, I I think it's so frustrating that people are so unwilling to have conversations these days. I mean, just unwilling to get to the bottom of the truth. I think any confusion or interpersonal conflict or so many problems can just be resolved by a simple conversation made in good faith, and it's so. It's so ridiculous how that's always the last option on the table in the social media age. It's always about what can I do to generate as as many hits and as much、uh, engagement so, as possible.、Yeah. It's it's yeah yeah. And yes, I do、it's、have、unethical. received lots of hate. I have received lots of messages. I'm, in, I'm sure in you have Spanish. For me, I was like, you know, okay, I understand now why famous people don't want to interact or. Sit there, but I'm not a famous person. So for me, of course, this is like training to become something bigger. I hope. Yeah. But、it's... I don't look at it that way. But it was it was just an uncomfortable first 24 hours. But once I heard that、uh, the Lee family has said all this and say that everything there in this article it's it's false, I was like,、yeah. great. That set、um, the record. But、uh, I didn't get to clean it up, and that that's the worst thing. Like what I wanted to say is that okay. So if reporters get the right to amend their articles、mm. afterwards, they found out that、uh, some facts were wrong and stuff like that.、Mm. I should have the right to clarify what I meant. Yeah,、so、your, your side not, of the story. Your side of the story. It, exactly. I mean, it all came from you in the first place. So、mm. <laughs> it's, right. It's it's just bizarre how they they approach Capcom before verifying it with you. And I and I think that to to me. Actions speak louder than words, and just the fact that they didn't take the time to verify anything with you, and they haven't been in any sort of contact with you, but instead they're posting articles, running to Capcom, running to the Lee Estate. For me, that speaks volumes.、Mm. Yeah, and that means,、uh, as as I did speak to Michael Kessner, he made a very good quote, and I, I guess you got the same thing. Like when you become a reporter journalist, you have to do the. Uh, what is it? you have a some a creed of some sort like the、mm. uh, the journalist creed,、mm. and then he also said another person said a very good thing. I don't want to be the one who breaks the story first. I want the story to be correct. Right, right. right. They well, created care, something this- out of nothing. They created something、yeah. out of a little soundbite on a little very personal local stream where you were just chilling out, and yeah, you know, and it sort of rode that wave of.、Um, You know the, the 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 background story of the Lee family、um, being you know a bit upset about media representations of Bruce Lee with the whole Once Upon a Time in Hollywood controversy and and I and I understand their perspective on that a hundred percent. I yeah, mean, me even, even when you see Quint- interviews with Quentin Tarantino, it's it's clear he like he has something against Bruce Lee on a personal level. Like he he sort of chastised him, Bruce, for、um, how he、oh. treated stunt men on the Green Hornet, and it's like. This is the first I've ever heard of this. It's um, it's you know, if if you do a bit of digging on this, it's it really seems like、uh, for Tarantino, this is a bit of a personal hangup, and I don't know where it stems from. But it's 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 kind of again on, on Tarantino's part, I think it's a bit unethical, a bit shitty, frankly, of him to portray that through his massive 
multi hundred million dollar movies because that really does change perceptions of a human being in a very you know tangible solid way but he kind of gets away with it because of hypo- well, hypothetical storytelling too so well he's like, tarantino yeah. as well i mean yeah. <laughs> I, I think we can leave that point behind us <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely so i guess is there anything else you want to you want to bring up or uh, clarify or underline or any shout outs, really? Well, of course, I want to give a shout out to the Street Fighter lore the guy who uh, always asked me a lot of interesting questions about how the music that I write uh, goes into the character and stuff like that. So he, he asked mm-hmm. a lot of really fun questions. He even mm-hmm. takes questions from other people and posts them on my uh, YouTube channel as mm-hmm. well. Of course, Michael. Casanova podcast, my first podcast friend, ever first podcast I ever made me interviews with since uh, three years back, ever mm-hmm. since the pandemic started. And um, and of course, uh, thank you for uh, reaching hey. out to me. And uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. You know, this has been a, it's, it's been so fun talking to you about um, some of my favorite mu- uh, music in recent video games. You know, um, I really love your contributions, especially to Street Fighter Five. Um, I think, I, I mean, I said this earlier, but you know, Street Fighter V had a bit of a rocky launch, but it's gone better every year since then. And uh, along with the, you know, the better package and the better balancing is the music has improved. And a big part of that um, are your contributions. You know, I, I love Zeku's theme, Cody's theme, G's theme. They're all fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's been a real pleasure and honor to talk to you. And of course, I don't, I don't know if Capcom is watching, but again, I would like to thank them as well because mm-hmm. if I wasn't there in this arcade hall in 1992 when I saw this Street Fighter II cabinet and hearing this amazing music, mm-hmm. at that very moment, I made up my mind, I want to write computer game music. I don't know how or I don't know when, but I want to be part of something like that. And That's now to be part yeah. of the Street Fighter canon, like the real thing, uh, it's a dream come true. So I... Thank you very much, Capcom, and the music supervisor. I don't think I should mention anybody my name here because, you know, who knows who's going to blow up mm-hmm. unwanted attention. Uh, I would like to thank my parents, my brothers, and everyone in the music spheres in Sweden who I've been working with. And in the words of uh, King Arthur from Excalibur, took years to build, but just moments to destroy. That is that is the way with goodwill, right? It takes years and years to build, and it can all be um, gone in an instant for reasons that are sometimes entirely out of your control. And it is especially in the in the digital age, especially in the social media age, where it is so easy for things to be drawn out of misrepresented. context, misrepresented, yeah. twisted, a certain narrative developed for you know, ulterior motives. It's very frustrating. And, and I and I think the, the big takeaway from this is, is people need to sit down and just have conversations, do their due diligence, be less quick to judge. <laughs> um, mm. it's, yeah. it's frustrating. Now, the reporter, if, if you're watching this, mm. you should try to reach out and uh, let's just make it a clean thing because I know how it is to begin on something new and making that first misstep with severe anger mm. uh, and all the thing people stirring up against another person. I don't know if you know what it feels like, but yes, this is way out of hand. I think there needs um, to be accountability here. I think someone needs yeah. to speak out and say, hey, I made a mistake. I should have, you know, I, I should have done my due diligence as a journalist. With a platform, I have a responsibility. You know, when you have a platform, you have a certain degree of responsibility. Um, and they haven't done that. They failed in that. And it's kind of cowardly how they're hiding and they're not owning up to it. So in the end, I do hope that my worth ethic speaks more than words uh, with the people I've been working for. And therefore, I hope that I will be able to work with these this company again. Uh, but right now, since you all know, I am a freelancer, not working at Capcom. I'm working with Capcom if I'm under contract. Mm. So my time, my responsibility, my people I hang out with, we're just having a nice, fun time. And everybody who was in the room spoke to me. It's like, I really enjoyed that little hangout you had, you know? Mm. It's like, but yeah, it was just... 
uh, destroyed by one individual and that, that sucks and I will be careful because I now need to put up disclaimer <laughs> yeah. on my videos from now on That's, yeah um, um, and, and, and I wish and I hope this gets resolved and I and I hope you don't lose any opportunities over this mm -hmm. and um, yeah I, I really hope for a positive conclusion for you because um, yeah I love your work um, it's been great speaking to you you know it, you're a great guy and thanks again so much for your time it's been a real pleasure Daniel thank you so much for having me pleasure pleasure thank you hey thank you for watching and a massive shout out to our patrons We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe really help the channel out. Cheers all, and have a good day.